What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of a fun video. Uh, I just wanted to revisit the Beretta M9A3. One of my all-time favorite guns, haven't done a, any videos on it in about a year, so I figured I'd give you just a year, a couple thousand round update, and tell you how it's doing. Before I do that, I wanna thank my Patreon supporters. You guys keep the channel moving right along. Uh, because of you, I can afford to buy guns and gear like this, and I uh, really appreciate it. If you wanna join the Patreon squad, all you gotta do is go to the link in the description, sign up. Also next to that link is a link to a local uh, shelter in Ames, Iowa that I like to support. It's a youth shelter, it's cold out there, those kids could use your help. Please get on there, click that link and sign up. And as always, the t-shirt down there if you wanna get the Honest Outlaw swag is there as well. For you guys that are not familiar with the Beretta M9A3, it is a variation of the M9 which served the US military for a really long time. It comes with a threaded barrel, Picatinny rail, a little bit of an upgraded trigger, uh, decocker. This actually has the Hogue overmolded grip on it, which I like a lot. Extended magazine release. Comes with three 17 round mags, so 18, 17 with one in the pipe. And uh, it comes in this pretty cool FDE color. I've done a couple of things to it. Obviously, I've added the optics mount. You can get these uh, cut now and milled uh, from Langdon Tactical uh, with a pretty cool optics mount that sits a little bit lower than this. But this is obviously the cheaper option. This is a Trigicon dovetail mount. Uh, I bought this right from Trigicon for like 60 bucks or something, threw an RMR on top of it. The reason why I decided to mount an optic to this is because optics are generally superior to iron sights, however, significantly more so at night. I wanted to give you the role that I've chosen for this pistol. A lot of times when guns stick around for a long period of time, at least with me, it's because they have filled a niche uh, for whatever reason better than the other gun did before it. And I test a lot of uh, weapon lights on the channel, and this is a very good platform for doing so. Number one, uh, it is very consistent and very reliable with lights hanging off the end of it, and that uh, cannot be said for a lot of different guns. Uh, Glocks, M&Ps, a lot of guns like that sometimes have issues when you hang weight off the front of it. The Beretta M9A3 has not had that issue at all, from my personal experience, with a multitude of ammunition. Another thing it does real well is suppress. So I have, well, somewhere in my bag here, oh, the Omega 9K, which is commonly on this gun when I shoot it at night, so it's just a little bit quieter for the neighbors, a little bit less uh, visual and noise uh, uh, related issues. Kind of cool to film with as well, and it kind of makes you feel like James Bond. Uh, I have a direct thread mount uh, normally, however right now it's set up for uh, some of my pistol caliber carbines, so it's got the trilog mount on there, so it won't fit right now, as you can see, but uh, this is the most common suppressor that I have on here because it's my favorite suppressor. Put 147 grain ammo, mixed with that and this platform here, and you have a very quiet shooting, very reliable handgun. Probably the most reliable handgun that I own suppressed, honestly. I don't have to change a recoil spring or anything like that. Screw the bad boy on there, and it works like a charm, which allows me to test lights very easily. Another thing I like about it is it's very accurate, and it's very easy to shoot overall. Single action trigger design, uh, very easy to get hits at long distance, and the double action makes it very safe to carry, either on your side, but particularly appendix, pointing at your junk, you need all the help you can get. Overall though, I think for the, the price that it is, comes right out of the box, ready to go with a really nice case and all these features. I think it's something like a thousand bucks, probably more than that now. Uh, however, I still think it is one of the better uh, Beretta M9 variations that you can buy. Obviously the Langdon Tactical, Wilson, things like that are gonna compete if not exceed, and those will be on the channel eventually, but this guy is an old classic for me and I like it. I've ran it for years and there's something about having something just know is gonna work. It really bumps it up a notch. It's like my Wilson Combat CQB 1911. When I know I take that thing out, no matter what that thing is gonna cycle, whatever ammo I put in it, and that's just a good feeling to have. So we're gonna go around and shoot it today, just mess around with it a little bit, have a little bit of fun, and uh, just do a range update video on the M9. Zeroed. My group here at 10 yards. Two, three, four, five, six. Kind of just ran a little line right across the top there. Bump it a couple notches low and be good to go. 
All right, now one thing I did mention earlier is that I said this was a decock already, like a G model. It's actually not. It, this is, in fact, a safety. So that still is a pain in the ass. But what I was trying to reference is that the uh, M9A3 actually has an upswept uh, safety decocker. So when you go to rack the firearm, you're less likely to put it on safe and uh, put the gun out of action. So that is my least favorite aspect of the Beretta M9, and at least the M9A3 has tried to fix that a little bit, whereas the 92X Performance actually had a thumb safety, which I think is overly uh, more so superior than even this model. However, uh, at least they're doing something about it, because I think that's probably the worst part about the M9. Uh, even with that said, the M9 shoots really nice. and I would still have no problem using it for a defensive gun. There's not a whole lot of guns on the market that are more proven than the M9. That's one of the nice things about a firearm being adopted by a military for a long period of time is that right away the first few years they kind of have some issues and then they really get the kinks worked out. So. I don't think you've ever shot this, let alone a Beretta M9, so it should be interesting. Should be. What do you think? Hopefully it'll be a little bit better than the high point. Uh. Oops. Well, that wasn't what I was going for, but here we are. Are my fingers placed well or? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yep, you're good to go there. Okay. A little bit different grip than you're used to. Well, you sure are hitting stuff. She can't keep it in focus. Sorry. Well, what'd you think? Oh, I'm out. You hit just about everything you aimed at. A couple misses, but um, I don't know. It's just too big for my hands. Yeah, that's for sure. It's a big got, gun. It's a big gun. That was one of the complaints of the M9 series, let alone you always putting talk that about big hoe gun. How big your hands are, but I have like really small hands. So <laughs> usually anything that fits you really well is just too big for me. Right, so right. Um, I could not. You know I love red dots, mm -hmm. but for some reason I just I don't know. I don't think this one was made for me. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, you are uh, you are used to the SRO and the mm. RMR is its little tiny little baby brother. So. Oh, okay. It's a little so. bit smaller window. It's a little bit harder to see. Yeah. And uh, I, the moon I, cut I on the uh, RMR makes it very very durable, but it also uh, loses a lot of sight picture by even comparison to the hollows and optics. I also feel like the re trigger reset was a little longer. It is a little bit longer. You know that um, that doesn't have any trigger work at all on it. Oh. And uh, we're gonna fix that sometime. I haven't decided if I should buy a Langdon Tactical Beretta or if I should send that bad boy to Langdon and see what they can do with it. And I think I might just send that. I am awful partial to that gun, I gotta say. It would be, if I had to pick 10 handguns, it would be in my top 10. Well, I don't know if it would be in mine, but. Yeah, I doubt it. Here we are. <laughs> oh well. All right, so one of the things I wanna mention on this particular Beretta uh, with this dovetail mount. I like the dovetail mounts, they give you a solution, especially on guns like, well, at least up until now, uh, the Bread M9, where you couldn't put a red dot on them at all, uh, as far as milling goes. Very recent uh, situation where you can actually mill them. 
the reason why I uh, checked my zero when I was downrange, which I do almost every time I shoot this, is because in my personal experience, these mounts are a little bit less durable, a little bit less reliable than something like a dedicated optic cut. Even a uh, Glock MOS system, stuff like that, those plates, they'll bend. And uh, overall, I think uh, I, uh, a uh, optics cut is superior as far as the durability of the uh, optic zero so overall though still a pretty cheap budget option but i'm definitely going to get uh, cut at some point just because i believe that option is better but it is more pricey and it is also kind of an inconvenience because you do have to send it to go get it cut I don't remember which one of those fall down. Not that one. That one does. Kind of gives you an appreciation of how accurate the Beretta M9 is. That's cheap uh, federal uh, training ammunition. Some of the cheapest ammunition you can buy with a dovetailed red dot mount and you're still able to put four inch groups or so at 50 yards, four and a half inch groups offhand. I think those, uh, I think the middle of those uh, pepper poppers are six inches. So at the very least six inch groups at uh, 50 yards and those pepper poppers are white with a white background. So red dot just allows you an extra level of accuracy. However, you do have some uh, issues when it comes to that as far as maybe going into a really dark room or really light room, not being able to see the, the dot so you're gonna have to condition yourself to uh, shoot intuitively for situations like that to really appreciate the dot up close and speed, but then use the dot at distance. To make sure I don't have any snot, snot on the old mustache. That's a, that's a winter issue. <laughs> FedEx guy was just here. We had to talk to him a minute. It's always awkward. But uh, we'll get back to shooting at 75 here and see how we do with the old Beretta. You think we can hit one of those pepper poppers from here? Well, I don't know if I could even see it. Shit. Apparently not. We can't well, end a miss. We got to load again. You did quick. hit something. So even though we missed the pepper poppers, I just wanted to uh, shoot a few more rounds real quick and uh, hit the ipsic dark and make myself feel better because I don't want to end the video on a miss. All right, that's better. So. My love for the Beretta M9A3 is definitely as strong as ever. I love the gun, shoots very quickly, maybe not as quickly as something like a 2011. Uh, part of that is because of the trigger reset. It's just a little bit longer uh, than maybe something like a tuned trigger would be on an M9 or a uh, 1911 tuned CZ, stuff like that. It's just a little bit longer than I'm used to, so I catch myself not doing quite enough, and then I come out a little bit further. Uh, that is just really an issue with uh, having a bunch of different firearms, shooting them all the time, and getting to know your particular trigger. If you run the M9, you could probably run it a lot faster than me. However, the accuracy of the M9 platform always amazes me. The 92X, the standard M9, the M9A3, the Beretta 92, whatever it is, the guns are phenomenally accurate. Uh, I like how they shoot, I like how they look. Uh, plenty of accessories, plenty of magazines still available. Definitely one of the go-to platforms still on the market today. No question. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters. And remember to recycle. I'll check you later.